Alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds contain two electrophilic sites, their carbonyl carbons and their beta carbons. And nucleophilic addition can occur at either of these sites to give the products of 1, 2, or 1, 4 addition, or direct or conjugate addition. And we're interested in understanding the factors that lead to these outcomes and to the extent that we can, predicting when direct and conjugate addition will occur given a set of reaction conditions. There are three factors that go into this determination. The first is the structure of the nucleophile. We ask ourselves the question, how hard or soft is the nucleophile? We'll understand what hard and soft mean here in a second. The second question is, what is the reaction temperature? And again, we'll understand the underlying reason why temperature affects this outcome here in a second. And the third question is related to the electrophile, the unsaturated carbonyl compound. How Lewis acidic is the carbonyl carbon? And what impact does that have on direct versus conjugate addition? So in the remainder of this video, we're going to look in detail at these three factors and understand how to make predictions and rationalize outcomes using these three factors. So first, let's discuss the nucleophile. Whether a particular nucleophile adds directly or in a conjugate fashion, 1, 2, or 1, 4, depends on what's called its hardness. Small nucleophiles with concentrated charge are called hard. These add in a 1, 2 fashion, while diffuse polarizable nucleophiles, which are called soft, add in a 1, 4 fashion. Hard nucleophiles are things like strongly polarized organometallic reagents, almost ionic organometallics like organolithiums and Grignard reagents. Small, highly charged anions like hydroxides and alkoxides, and so on and so forth. And for the organometallics, we can think of these almost as carb anions. There's very concentrated negative charge on a carbon atom in these hard nucleophiles. Hard nucleophiles, because of their high charge density, are driven by what we might call charge control. The nucleophile is attracted through electrostatic forces to the atom that bears the greatest partial positive charge. And in unsaturated carbonyl compounds, by and large, that is the carbonyl carbon. So in the example we see here, the carbonyl carbon has much more partial positive charge than the beta carbon. And in fact, the partial charge on the beta carbon is actually negative. So hard nucleophiles will tend to be attracted to that partially positive carbonyl carbon and add in a direct fashion in an irreversible manner to give the 1,2 addition product. Soft nucleophiles are diffuse, resonance stabilized. They have negative charge that is spread out over a relatively large number of atoms. And as such, they're much less susceptible to charge control. Soft nucleophiles add selectively in a conjugate or 1,4 fashion with most unsaturated carbonyl compounds. And the reason for this is what we might call orbital control. The selectivity of a soft nucleophile is driven by its overlap with the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the unsaturated carbonyl compound. And in the majority of these, the largest lobe of the LUMO is located on the beta carbon. For example, that's the situation in the structure shown here. That large LUMO density at the beta carbon drives the nucleophile to that position through orbital control. And so soft nucleophiles tend to add to the beta carbon in preference to the carbonyl carbon, leading to conjugate addition products. There are some nucleophiles that are on the borderline between hard and soft, and the outcome for these depends on the remaining two factors, temperature and the nature of the electrophile. To understand the temperature effect, let's zero in on one of these borderline nucleophiles, cyanide, and try to understand what happens when cyanide is mixed with an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone. At low temperatures, the first thing we observe is 1,2, or direct addition of cyanide to the carbonyl carbon, which produces a cyanohydrin. And if the temperature is kept low and the reaction time is kept relatively short, this will be the observed outcome. The major product will be the one derived from 1,2 addition. However, if the temperature is raised or the reaction is allowed to run for a long period of time, the 1,2 addition product is gradually replaced with the 1,4 addition product and it becomes the major product at high temperatures and long reaction times. The reason for this is that the 1,2 addition product can revert back to starting material. Cyanide adds reversibly. We've actually seen this previously. And so the cyanohydrin can reform starting material and at high temperatures, 1,4 addition will begin to predominate. The reason conjugate addition predominates at high temperatures is because the conjugate addition product is more stable than the direct addition product 
because in the conjugate addition product, we retain the stronger carbon-oxygen double bond. And this is going to be a general result for any nucleophile that adds reversibly. And we've seen these previously in discussions of nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl group. These are things like amines, alcohols, and cyanide that add to the carbonyl group but can also be eliminated. At high temperatures, that elimination will tend to drive the product mixture towards the conjugate addition product, which is almost universally more stable because of the special strength of the carbon-oxygen double bond. The Lewis acidity of the carbonyl compound can also play a role, particularly in these borderline cases. And the key question here is, how electrophilic is the carbonyl carbon relative to the beta carbon? That depends on what other group is connected to the carbonyl carbon outside of the alkene or alkyne. And in looking at that, we can assess the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon. So for example, 1,2 addition tends to be favored for very Lewis acidic carbonyl compounds like acyl chlorides. Here the carbonyl carbon is profoundly Lewis acidic and the nucleophile tends to add at that carbon ultimately to give products of nucleophilic acyl substitution after the elimination of chloride. This is entirely driven by that strong electrophilicity, that high Lewis acidity of the carbonyl carbon in the acyl chloride. For carbonyl compounds in which the carbonyl carbon is much lower in Lewis acidity. For example, enamids, where the carbonyl carbon is part of an amide, one four addition tends to predominate. This is because the carbonyl carbon is not very Lewis acidic. We wouldn't expect many nucleophiles to add to the carbonyl carbon of an amide anyway, because we know that carbon already is not very Lewis acidic. And indeed, when an unsaturated amide is treated with the nucleophile, it will tend to add in a 1,4 fashion, not ever even touching that relatively unreactive carbonyl carbon. Of course, there is a gray area here between the amide and acyl chloride, which kind of sit on opposite ends of the spectrum, where we might expect a mixture of 1,2 and 1,4 addition products. And we can think about using the other factors to overcome those ambiguities or overcome a product mixture. For example, we might heat the reaction to high temperature to try to drive 1,4 addition or use a very hard nucleophile to try to drive 1,2 addition.